Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to this Introduction to Seaborn series. Today we're talking about the Seaborn Count Plot. So to start off, what is the Count Plot? Well, the Count Plot is a way to count up the number of observations you have per category and then display that information in bars. So you can kind of think about this like a histogram, but for categorical data. It's a very simple plot, but potentially very useful, especially when you're doing exploratory data analysis. So let's check out the count plot in the Seaborn code. So let's get started coding up the count plot using Seaborn. By the way, all of the code I'm about to demo is available on my GitHub page. Okay, so first I want to import the Seaborn library, and then I'm going to load in some data from the Seaborn library itself about diamonds. And so each row of this data set contains information about one particular diamond. I'm also going to narrow down to just clarity equal to SI1 or VS2, and I'm really just doing this so later on I have a category with only two options, and we'll see that later. So once I narrow everything down, I've got about 25,000 different diamonds in this data set. I'm going to set my styling to be dark grid, and now I'm ready to create my first count plot. To do that, I'll reference the Seaborn library and call up the count plot. Then I just need to pass what column would I like to plot. I'm going to be plotting the color column, and these data come from our diamonds data frame. So basically what Seaborn does with this plot is just count up the number of observations we have for each category that it finds in the color column. So for example, Seaborn found about 1,500 different diamonds with color equal to J. So if you're familiar with pandas, this is really just plotting out what we would see if we applied value counts to this column. So these numbers here are exactly what we're plotting when we do a count plot. One really nice thing about the Seaborn count plot is that we can very easily switch from vertical bars into horizontal bars. All we need to do is switch this X into a Y. Now we'll see that color column along the Y axis, and we have horizontal bars instead of vertical ones. So at this point, you may be thinking that that Seaborn count plot looks very similar to the Seaborn bar plot, but there is one really big difference. With the Seaborn count plot, we are literally just counting up the number of observations per category. With the Seaborn bar plot, however, we're getting an estimate for some summary statistic per category. So for example, you might see the average per each category, and we're also getting confidence intervals that are created using bootstrapping. So they're really used for two different things. However, the coding options available to you for the Seaborn count plot are very similar to those of the bar plot. Let's check out some of those options in the Seaborn code. For our first option, let's talk about the order that these bars appear. So if I take a look at my count plot for the color of these diamonds, you'll see that the bars are not currently sorted based on most popular to least popular. They're actually lined up alphabetically from D to J. But if we take a look at another column, let's say cut, now you'll see that the bars are no longer arranged alphabetically. So it can be very confusing at first to figure out how Seaborn is actually arranging these bars. So I wanted to walk you through the process a bit. If we take a look at the data types of this data frame, so diamonds is a data frame, if we take a look at D types, you'll notice that we have several floats, integers, and then we have these three columns that are considered category data types. Cut, color, and clarity are all categories. This is a special data type, and what it means for us is that we can actually check a property of these. So let's check the color. They actually have this property called categories. This is what Seaborn is actually using to line up those bars. So typically, category columns are going to come with this property called categories. And Seaborn is going to use this to figure out how it should line up those bars. So in the first one, we're lining up alphabetically. But in the second one, we're lining up based on the best diamonds first, all the way down to the worst diamonds. And this is a property that's been set up beforehand by the creators of this data set. So Seaborn is actually going to try to leverage this. 
If it can't find a property called categories, it will sort your strings based on the ones that appear first in the data set. Or if we're talking about numbers, Seaborn will sort those in order. Okay, but what if that categories order is not how you'd like these bars to appear? The Seaborn count plot has an argument called order, and you can just pass in a list of how you'd like to order these bars. So here I'm passing in a list that starts with J first and goes up to D, and that's exactly how we see the bars in the plot. But oftentimes we might want to sort these bars either ascending or descending. So since this is a pandas data frame, I would recommend using the value counts method. This will actually sort your bars by the most popular to the least popular. If we go ahead and grab the index from here, we would see the most popular category is E all the way down to the least popular category, which is J. Then we can just use this index when we create our order for our bars. Now we'll have these sorted descending, but if you prefer to have them sorted ascending, all you need to do is just reverse this index, which you can do with two colons and a negative one. That will just switch the index completely around, and now you'll have ascending bars instead. If you've used Seaborn before, you know that most of these plots are going to have an argument called hue, which will allow you to show off another categorical variable. So right now we have the color going along the x-axis, but if we'd also like to know something about how color changes with clarity, we could just use the hue argument to pass in that other column called clarity. So an interesting thing happens here, and I wanted to walk you through what's going on and how you can update this. At the very beginning of this video, I filtered my data set down to just clarities which were VS2 or SI1. But here I'm actually seeing a legend for all of the different clarity categories. So what's happening is that issue of this is actually a category data type. So Seaborn is pulling this legend from that categories property that we talked about earlier. So if this happens to you and you don't actually want to show off all those different categories, what you can do is leverage this one other property called hue order. Here we can pass in a list of exactly how we'd like these clarities to be ordered. I'll do SI1 and then BS2. If you pass in a list like this for just those two categories that you have in your data, that will be updated and you'll only have those two appear in your legend and you'll only have space for those two along your axes. So in this style of plot, we're actually counting up how many diamonds we saw for each color and for each clarity subgroup. So that can be really useful to see what that breakdown is when you are doing exploratory data analysis. Like usual, there's tons of styling options available to you for the Seaborn count plot. So let's check it out in the Python code. When it comes to styling the count plot, probably the first thing that you'll want to update are the colors. Having one different color for every single bar might be a little jarring to someone who's trying to look at this visual. So my recommendation here, unless you have one particular bar that you're trying to highlight, you might decide just to switch all of these bars to the exact same color. And you can do that through this color property and just passing in a string that represents the color you'd like to pick. Of course, if you would like to have each bar with its own color, you can use this palette argument, which will switch your bars over to a Seaborn palette. And Seaborn has over 100 different palettes that you can choose from. The other nice thing about the count plot is that other keyword arguments that you pass into the count plot will get passed on to the matplotlib bar plot. So if you have other arguments that you know about from the bar plot, you can use those here as well. For example, we could increase the line around the outside of each of those bars. We could change the edge color of that line. And we can even add a pattern to these bars, leveraging this hatch property. So those keywords are all going straight through to the matplotlib bar plot. So I hope you enjoyed learning all about the Seaborn count plot. If you want to see more about the Seaborn bar plot, you can check out my past video about that. And if there's any other videos that I should include in this Intro to Seaborn series, be sure to let me know about them in the comment section below. Thanks so much, and I'll see you next time. Temple. <laughs> Temple level? Temple? What am I even trying to say? Estimate for some summaries for some? Some?